This is Dave Sundstrom. Welcome to another video celebrating entertainment from decades gone by. You know, the good stuff. During the early 80s, it seemed to me that Jamie Gertz was one of the most popular actors on the big screen. Every time I turned around, there she was in another hit movie. Now usually when I publish videos about stars from the 80s, I provide some sort of update about what they're currently doing near the end of the video. But this time around, let's just go ahead and start with that update. Jamie and her husband, along with a couple of other investors, own the Atlanta Hawks. And Jamie has very much become one of the more visible faces of that basketball organization. How it all happened is a story for another day. Today I'm going to share my top five Jamie Gertz movies and I'm going to start by saying that Twister is not one of them. However, as long as I've mentioned that movie now, I will say, rest in peace Bill Paxton. You left us too soon, too darn soon. And I'll also add that Jamie's role as Dr. Melissa Reeves, the fiance of Paxton's character, was one of the best things in the movie. I guess I should also probably mention that I am not talking about any of Jamie's television appearances in this video, although there have certainly been some notable ones. Perhaps down the road in another video I will tackle her five greatest TV shows. Three that quickly come to mind are Square Pegs, an appearance in Seinfeld, and Still Standing. But that's a topic for another day. Now that I've got all of that out of the way, let's start in earnest. Coming in at number five is Less Than Zero. Prior to seeing the movie, I had already read the book by Brett Easton Ellis, and I think the filmmakers did a decent job of adapting a book that, quite frankly, wasn't all that easy to transition to the big screen. Along with Jamie, who plays a coked-up model named Blair, the film boasted a fantastic performance by Robert Downey Jr., and Andrew McCarthy delivered one of his best performances as well. Even though he isn't pictured here, I've also got to say that James Bader was pretty darn good in the film as well. I know that the author of the book did not think the casting was great in this movie, but you know what? I disagree. I think that Jamie and the others did the best that they could with the material that they had. End of the day, I admire the movie for what it tried to be. And of course for the inclusion of the great Bengals cover of the Simon and Garfunkel classic, Hazy Shade of Winter, which was on the movie's soundtrack. In the number four spot, we've got the movie Quicksilver. If memory serves me correctly, this flick came out not too long after Footloose, and everyone thought that it would be a hit just because Kevin Bacon was in the lead role. And while Kevin was fine, his co-stars, Jamie and Paul Rodriguez, really elevated the production. One of the things that you will notice about most of the movies on this list is that Jamie is typically part of the supporting cast. However, as I work my way to number one, the number three movie on my list is one where Jamie gets top billing. She's the star. And with 1992's Jersey Girl, Jamie really shines in a story that is a bit predictable, but always fun. You know, it's a shame that this movie wasn't a bigger hit at the box office because I think Jamie really demonstrated her skill as an actor in this romantic comedy. However, at this point in her life, Things were changing for Jamie, and I suspect that as much as she loved her chosen profession, other things were being prioritized ahead of finding that next really big role. So let's wind back the clock a bit for my number two pick. Yep, we're back to supporting roles for the 1986 film Crossroads, which starred Karate Kid Ralph Macchio as a young man who has a fascination for blues music, and even more specifically, legendary blues musician Robert Johnson. In the movie, Jamie plays a character named Frances who is fleeing her abusive stepfather. During the film, Macchio's character Eugene falls head over heels for Frances. However, when she decides to part ways with him, he is left heartbroken, but with an even greater connection with the music that he loves. Alright, alright, I think many of you might have already guessed my favorite Jamie Gertz movie. It's another supporting role, but boy oh boy is it a good one. I am indeed talking about The Lost Boys. Director Joel Schumacher's over-the-top vampire flick, which hit movie screens during the summer of 1987. This movie, which is set in the fictional beach town of Santa Carla, California, is one of my all-time favorite movies, 
It literally has everything that you'd want in a film like this. Thrills, chills, and more than a few laughs along the way, paired with actors who are perfectly cast for their roles. In the movie, Jamie plays a character named Star. Does she get turned into a vampire? Well, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who might have decided to watch this movie because of this video. However, I will say this. The movie has one of my all-time favorite lines uttered by Bernard Hughes when he says at the end of the film, One thing about living in Santa Carla, I never could stomach all the damn vampires. Alright, that's my list. Less Than Zero, Quicksilver, Jersey Girl, Crossroads, and my number one pick, The Lost Boys. Now, let me share one more guilty pleasure with you. Has anyone else seen 1990's Don't Tell Her It's Me? I've seen it on some of the streaming services retitled as The Boyfriend School. Regardless of the title, this movie, which also stars Steve Gutenberg, Kyle MacLachlan, and Shelley Long, is a really fun film, even if it was an absolute bomb when it was released to theaters. Come to think of it, I'm not even sure it went to theaters. It might have been one of those movies that went straight to video. In the film, Gutenberg plays a nerdy cartoonist who is recovering from Hodgkin's disease who falls for Jamie's character. This thing is a light-as-air, piece-of-fluff movie where the viewer pretty much knows everything that is going to play out long before the movie ends. However, that doesn't mean that it's not enjoyable. Maybe that's why I've watched it multiple times and I always come away feeling a bit better about things. And you know what? Just like every other movie that I've talked about here, Jamie is absolutely great. I guess it's fair to say that one of her talents is that whatever movie she's in, Jamie just effortlessly makes you like the character that she's playing. There are a handful of other actors that can do that as well. I've always felt that way about John Ritter. Here's a video about him that I think you will enjoy. Go ahead and click on it. I'm pretty much done here. Thank you so much for watching.